Good morning, everyone. All right, um, since you guys are all standing, let's actually uh, jump right, no, no, stay standing. Let's jump, jump right into a fun little thing. Uh, I want you in a moment to turn to a partner and uh, you're gonna have 20 seconds to share in one sentence. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I know, you guys are ready to hug it out. It's cool, it's cool. There's gonna be, there's gonna be a lot of love flowing in just a minute, I promise. All right, but here, here's what I want you to do, okay? Is I want you to share with your partner three identity frames about yourself. Okay, what's an identity frame? Okay? Any, anybody have an idea? What do you think is an identity frame? Yeah? Characteristic or result, yeah? What else? An identity frame, yeah? It's like three words that would describe you that don't describe everyone. Yeah. Okay, I like that a lot, right? So it's something that's distinctive. Now, an identity frame, okay, is a specific role or character. So think about the characters you play in your life. Like, for instance, you might play the data geek. You might play the character of a former Olympic swimmer, right? A lot of different characters. You might play the character of, I'm the world's greatest uncle. All right, a lot of different identity frames. It's just think about three different characters in your life, professional or personal. Everybody get that? That you are or that you could? That you are. Okay. Oh, and not only are you it, but you're really freaking good. Like these are three different identity frames that you're like, yo, I own this. This is me. Everybody get that? All right, find a partner, quick. Uh, look around, five, look around. Just jump it, jump into a group if you, if we're, we've got an odd number. Time is up. Go ahead, thank your partner and take your seats. So good morning everybody. I'm Michael Margolis. I'm the founder of Get Storied. And as Andre mentioned, uh, we're building one of the world's leading schools around business narrative. And we teach uh, change agents and innovators, how to communicate big ideas, how to pitch your message, how to tell your personal story, okay? And our specialty is innovation. So when you're doing something that's new, that's different, that's disruptive, that's revolutionary, how do you get people to see what you see? Okay. And you guys are all entrepreneurs. Okay. So there's some idea that you have that you're here working on. Right? And when you tell people about your work, does everybody get it immediately? No, right? No. It's not that easy. And yet for you, it's pretty damn obvious, isn't it? Yeah. It's so obvious. God, why don't they get it? <laughs> All right, so we're gonna explore that today. How to shorten the gap between what is obvious to you, yet gets lost in translation with everybody else, okay? And I know you guys are getting ready for the pitch, coming up shortly. The pitch is simply telling the story, okay? So we're gonna talk about that, and this isn't gonna be once upon a time fairy tales, or how to tell a better anecdote, or how to become a theatrical performer. We're gonna talk about startup storytelling. This is gonna be, how do you communicate who you are, what you're doing, who it's for, why it matters, right? And some of the narrative principles that bring that to life, okay? 
Now, the exercise I just had you guys do, how you introduce yourself speaks volumes about how you see yourself. So you want to start thinking about like what's, what is the character that I inhabit? What are the roles that I take on? How do you define yourself? You know, I'm, I'm a teacher. I'm an anthropologist. I'm a global nomad. So since July 1st of last year, I sold everything I have pretty much owned. I now live out of a small black bag. And every couple months, I live in a different creative hub around the world. Total dream deferred for 20 years. It's what I've wanted to do. But I'm able to do it because of the internet. And we have courses online where a lot of our people come together, but then also I teach in a lot of the different cities. So I've been in Vancouver, I've been in Amsterdam, I've been in London, New York, I just got back from two months in India. In the Bay Area, San Francisco is a place that I used to live in and I spent a lot of time here. Um, so. How you introduce yourself speaks volumes about how you see yourself. Now, why does that matter as a startup? Why do you guys think? Because you didn't change anything, you're going to send your travel. Ah. Yeah, so part of this is how are you framing or defining your startup, right? The choice you're making around that. So that's great. What else? Because people are investing in they're investing in you. Yeah. So your personal story matters as much as the product story, doesn't it? Yeah. Anybody else? You want to bring, bring the product e easier to, uh, near to the people that you are trying to buy the thing mm. So what, that's a really interesting point. Wanting to bring your product near and closer to the people you want to introduce this to. So what does what your personal story have to do with that? They see someone who is like them and has the same problem and he's providing the solution. Ah, yes. So you're, you're using your own story to make this product or idea more relatable. Yeah. Okay. Now, sometimes as a startup, what we're working on, we're not necessarily representative or an avatar of our ideal customer. Any of you guys working on something like that? Okay. Are most of you working on a product or an idea that you represent yes. sort of the ideal avatar? Okay, so some of you. Okay, good. Well, so those of you who've picked or come up with an idea where you're ultimately finding or creating a solution for a customer that you kind of relate to and are similar to, in certain ways, that's easier. So, you know, congratulations for making a smart choice. But those of you who are working on something where you're not the ideal customer, congratulations for taking on a tougher nut to crack. It's more of a riddle. It's going to be a little bit of a taller mountain to climb. So either way is okay. All right, but your personal story really matters. Um, so what we're going to do today, we're going to do a couple things. Um, is I want to share with you guys, I, you know, one of the things that we teach is this methodology called Lean Story. Okay? And Lean Story is a, a narrative framework that's designed for the pitch, for how to communicate any big idea, and how do you frame the conversation? How do you, how do you even get people to know where the heck they're at when they're listening to you? And how do you then get to a core dilemma that your audience or your customers facing that ultimately your product or solution serves. How do you get to that? And then lastly, how do you get people to believe you? Because that's the biggest obstacle we have as entrepreneurs and change agents. Disbelief. Uh, who the heck are you? I don't know if I can believe that. And a lot of what we're taught in the pitch, I gotta be honest with you guys, the classical pitch methodology is a recipe for sounding and looking like a douche. Okay? I just said it, all right, it's on the table. There's a way that we're taught to present this stuff that's really easy to come off as bluster and egotistical, 
which then invites our audience to beat the crap out of us. Okay, so part of what I'm gonna teach you and share with you today is gonna actually, it's, it's to help you be able to talk about your work in a way that is gonna make you more endearing, in a way where people are gonna be more forgiving about what you're presenting, because it's a work in progress. You talk to any entrepreneur who's been, I mean, I've been doing this work for 15 years with storytelling, and I'm an entrepreneur, it's a work in progress. So how do you use storytelling elements to make yourself more likable, more relatable, right? To draw people into that they're cheering for you. All right, so we're gonna break this stuff down. I'm gonna teach you actually three, three core steps or principles that you guys can use to organize as you're preparing for the pitch. Uh, it's part of a larger six step framework. Oh, well, there goes that. All right, let's try to get this back up. Um, so what I'm gonna share with you guys is a three step uh, process that you can go through. It's part of a larger six step framework, but the good news is all you need to know is the three steps. Our six step version is just an advanced version. It's like a second round where we go deeper in. 